we just gave you a kiss as the scripture says in the book of Psalms kiss us with the kisses of your lips oh God <laughs> we are so humbled by what father you did for us by sending your only son and Jesus we are so humbled and honored and we give you thanks because there was no greater demonstration of love than you would lay your life down for us and you did and we just say thank you we love you and worship you praise God well I want to do this and those of you that are watching I want to stay in the attitude of of, of uh, worship and prayer I feel like I, I'm supposed to teach something to you that I think is going to change your life and so I want us, we're going to receive Holy Communion together I would ask that those that are watching you're welcome to join us go ahead and be seated they're going to continue to worship the Lord. The ushers are going to begin to serve you. And if you are here, and also those of you in the chapel, we welcome you as well. I know there's overflow. How many of you believe this? Do you realize that within less than a year from now, we are going to be in our new sanctuary? I mean, and it'll be a place. God, you're listening. <laughs> it's going to be a place where you're going to show up and we're going to make room for you and it's going to be an honor to be with you in that place so but uh, i want to just mention this as the ushers are serving you the elements are stacked together and uh, as we worship the lord just a little bit longer here as they serve you i will come back and we will partake together i want to share a couple of scriptures with you and those of you that are watching that can be a benefit to your life and then i've got a powerful teaching i want to share with you amen all right, ushers, you go ahead and serve the people. Let's continue to worship God. And uh, man, I feel His presence. How about you? Amen. Yes, 
just want to, I don't know, I, <laughs> Jesus, wow, <laughs> we esteem you, we esteem you, God, <laughs> Jesus, wow, wow, don't you love him? Amen. Well, why don't we be seated in the presence of the Lord and those of you that are watching around the world. Thank you for joining us. I want to do this as we receive Holy Communion. I want them to put up some pictures real quick of the depiction of what Jesus, I like to do this every year. I mean, I do it throughout the year just to remind myself of what Jesus paid for for us. And I want you to see as you get ready and partake of what he said this is my body this is my blood he didn't say it represents he said this is and i want you to look at what jesus paid for because i want to talk to you real quick about 12 kingdom benefits of what you're about to receive seven of the blood and five of the body and so i want to show you so that you can know what god has provided for you so do they have a few pictures that maybe they could show up there he is a depiction he said father forgive them they know not what they do the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that they couldn't even look at him they hid their face Isaiah 53 4 Isaiah 52 said they were appalled to look at him which literally means they vomited the Bible says also that he was the lamb that was led to the slaughter Isaiah 53 Isaiah 52 he also the Bible says that we hid our faces from him and he was marred beyond any human recognition that's our Savior. And so I want you to see this because oftentimes religious spirits, they get in the way and they want to make it look like, you know, he just had a little, you know, thumbprint in his wrist, but that's not it. He did this for us. And so I want you, as you partake with us tonight and those of you around the world, I want you to take that which he said, this is my body. And I want you to look at what he provided for us he said take and eat for this is my body which has been given for you and of course you can see what happened but there are five benefits that i call of the body if they could put up luke chapter 24 and uh, we can look at verses i believe it's 31 and 32 notice this what happened when he took communion with his disciples it says number one their eyes were open when you receive of his body you're going to come into revelation that's why you have to understand it's not just a ceremonial thing. It's, it's what he said, this is my body. Second, it says they knew him. How many want to know God more? I believe when you receive Holy Communion on a regular basis that there's an awareness. I know when I do, it's like I'm, I'm more aware and grateful what he paid for 
and uh, I can better receive what he provided for us. He said, and he vanished out of their sight. Look at verse 32. So your eyes will be open. You'll know him. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn with us? Something begins to happen. You get on fire for God when you partake of the communion. And uh, he talked with us. Well, they heard his voice. How many want to hear the voice of God? Amen. Receive communion. Your heart will begin to burn. I mean, it's like the intensity of your passion for him will, will increase. I, I can't explain it, but I know it does for me. And watch this. He'll open up to the scriptures. In other words, you'll come into a deeper understanding of the word that became flesh and dwelt among us and what is written in the scriptures about him. And so those are the benefits of the body. But there's also something we have to remember. And this is why I have the scarlet thread. Oh, it fell off of me. I hear I wrapped it around my ring. Can, did, where did it go? Well, I have another one. I had a backup because I thought that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a point of contact anyway. I'm just holding it up because I want you to know. And I look at Danny. I'm thank you for playing. He injured his fingers, and the doctors did not give him a good report, but they gave him a great report. Said it's a miracle. They don't understand it. Thank you, but you know, Brenda and I, Brenda and I, as your as your pastors, we have a we have a legal right in the spirit if if we are your pastors to take a lamb. For this house and those of you that are e-members and those of you that are partners, we, we take communion and say, Lord, we bring the, the church family to this table. And we've been praying for you. So thank you for what you're doing, Daddy. I appreciate that. All right. Are you ready? Let's partake. I want you to say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you did by sending Jesus. So right now, we receive those benefits of the body. Right now, our covenant is enforced. We receive it now. Amen. Now, on the same night, he took of the cup. He said, take and drink, for this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. And I want you to understand in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, there are seven benefits of the blood. I just showed you five of the, of the bread, but this is the blood. Worthy is the lamb who is... Slain, watch this, to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. And every one of those, that's seven of them. Jesus never received anything that he didn't share with us as joint heirs. We have a right in our covenant to partake in every single one of those things. And here's what you have to understand. Everything that was done to Jesus' body was meant for you. And so you received power when they put the nails in his feet. Luke 10, 19, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the powers of the devil. And then how about riches? Well, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that riches are in your right hand. So when they nailed his right hand, it's so that you could come into prosperity. You don't have to be poor. You can be blessed. Your businesses can absolutely come into overflow. How about this? Wisdom. Well, when did you receive wisdom? The Bible says that there is a, a crown of, of wisdom. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact scripture, but that's what you also have, you have the mind of Christ. Strength, how about, you ever heard someone said, get a backbone? Well, part of the strength that you got is the strength that you can walk in this world and you don't have to be sick in your body at all another day in your life because it's already been provided for in, in, in the atoning blood of Jesus. When did you receive honor? That was his left hand because it says in his left hand, watch this, in the book of Proverbs, it says in the left hand is not only honor but long life. You know why Jesus died at 33? So you don't have to. That's premature death. You can live long and strong. Psalm 91 verse 13 says with long life, he'll satisfy you. And you know what that literally means in the Hebrew? You can have as many sunsets and sunrises as you want within the lifespan of man. Marilyn Hickey taught me that. I said, Marilyn, that's a good word. Glory. Well, when did glory? That came out of the side, it, right? Christ within you, the hope of glory and blessing came with his forehead when the when the sweat came out of his forehead so how many of you got that all right you ready say i receive all the rights all the privileges of my blood covenant i'm sealed in this blood even my family it is well and according to psalm 103 verse 4 you have redeemed by your blood our lives from any destruction any tragedy any calamity any premature death or of sickness and disease so we are sealed in this blood we shall live long and strong healthy and whole 
with soundness of mind all the days of our long life. I'll drink to that. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want you to do this. I want you just to stay in the attitude of worship. They can bring the lights up. But why don't you just share your name with someone around you? I took a little bit longer here than I wanted to because we still have a lot to do. But just take a few moments, greet one another. That'll give me time to kind of get everything together here. I greet you that are also watching online, those of you that are in the chapel. Such an honor to have you here. I can't wait to share a word with you. Praise God. Praise God. And if you've got your scarlet thread, make sure that you hold it up. Because <laughs> we're going to be praying for you. we got all your prayer requests here as well. Amen. Well, if I don't stop this, you guys are going to go on for an hour. <laughs> anyway, I just want to, I just want from my heart to thank you and everyone that has come out tonight. And those of you that are watching, there's a lot of other things that you could do, but you put God first. And I think that has really pleased the Lord. And uh, I'm just thrilled to be here with you to be able to partake of this, this time together. This is very special. I do want to say this, this is Good Friday. How many of you know that? And uh, we also know with what Jesus did, but I will tell you why it's also a Good Friday. Because back in 1989, this was the day that I asked Brenda's dad for her hand in marriage. And uh, so, and, uh, and he said yes. He came out, he came from work. He was in the Air Force. And he came, he was like six foot three. Is that about right, Brenda? Six three. And he had his dress blues on, and I'm like, gulp. You know, because, you know, how many of you served the military? And I thank God for your serves, but it's kind of intimidating. And so he was six foot three, and I'm just kind of looking at him like, you know. And he, I said, you know, sir, it'll be a really good Friday for the rest of my life if you say yes to what I'm about to ask you. So, so I thank God. He's in heaven now and, and uh, all that. But, and then three days later, Brenda got the shock of her life. I was playing Jesus that year in the Easter drama, and uh, I had long hair like Matthew, and they had to put a fake beard, fake beard on me. I know, I couldn't grow one. I still can't grow one, so there you go. I'm almost 57. I still can't grow a beard. <laughs> Not very well. It always has holes in it, and a farmer told me it looked like a wheat field with 90% hail damage. <laughs> so, but anyway, so I, after, the, uh, after the drama on Sunday, uh, I had... Brenda, go, go with me to a private place in the church, and I propose to her dressed like Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that right, honey? Re the resurrected Jesus. And, and I got to tell you, though, because I figured, how can you say no to a guy that looks like Jesus? <laughs> so, all right, listen, I want to share with you something that's probably going to shock some of you. It, 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 listen, I'm going to give you lots of scripture, and I want to get right into it. And uh, I actually wrote a book years ago, and I tested it by my spiritual fathers when I wrote it. It's called My Heart Cries Abba, because I was praying one day, and I really believed that I heard the voice of the Lord when he said to me that, he said, Hank, I will never leave you nor forsake you, nor did I forsake my son. And when I heard his voice say, nor did I, uh, I did not forsake my son, I thought, uh-oh, I've never heard that. I've always heard Eli, Eli, Lava, Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thought, my goodness, something must, I must be hearing the wrong voice. And so I started studying uh, on my own and started coming up with it. So I submitted it to my spiritual fathers and mothers. And they said, Hank, you are on a, on a, on a, uh, a road here of truth. And so um, I want you to hold up if you have your scarlet thread and those of you that are watching around the world. Because the reason I want to talk to you about Jesus, and you can put it back down. I just want to make sure you have it, <laughs> is the fact that is is this i've heard people say well jesus was forsaken by the father the father turned away because he couldn't look at sin and he turned away and he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't look at at jesus who became sin well you got to be careful because you got to you got to understand what those words literally mean before you say he became sin and uh, they think well if if the father forsook jesus 
then there's good news for us. He'll never leave or, or forsake us. But I think it's, it speaks more of the character of the father who in, who in his son's most excruciating moment in time in his life, he didn't leave him. To me, I would rather put my hope and trust in a God that did that than one that just put everything on Jesus so that we wouldn't have to. I think, uh, and so I want to talk to you about this. This is very powerful. So I really broke it down. I wrote a book called My Heart Cries Abba. I explained it even in more detail, but I kind of broke it up and made it more kind of a quick version. And I'm going to really show you some scriptures. And so I'm just asking that your heart be open tonight and do what the scripture says. You go home and you search it out to see if it's so for you. Would you be willing to do that? How many be willing to do that? All right. So I want to start off with Joshua chapter 2, and I want to do this because we're all holding our scarlet thread. We are believing God for our lives, for our family, our loved ones. And there's a story in the book of Joshua that, and I'll kind of paraphrase it, but the, the Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two spies to go in to where the promised land, here they had wandered around 40 years, and now it was time for them to begin to take their promised land. And it was really interesting because as they went into the promised land, they came into a harlot's house named Rahab, and they lodged there. Well, this got back to the king, and you can see that if you go on in your own study in verses 3 and 4, where the king found out and sent some of the men there and said, look, you house some of the spies of Israel, and we know it. Well, she hit them up in the roof, and, uh, or roof, whichever, uh, if you're from the south, north, east, or west. <laughs> But anyway, look at verse 12. She knew she could get in trouble. And uh, she said, swear now by the Lord, since I've done this, I've showed you kindness. Now watch this. And uh, she said, also show kindness to my father's house and give me a witness. I want a true token. I want you to give me something that will prove you will not forsake me. You, you're going to do what you said. You're going to make sure that me and my family are saved and that your God will watch over us. So, you know, she was putting all of her trust that God would not forsake her or her family or the two spies. How many got that? And so here's what they told her to do. Look at verse 18. It says, go ahead and when they came into the land, bind a line of scarlet. So that's what you have, a scarlet thread. And put it in a window. And what we have to understand is that scarlet thread literally is the thread that runs throughout Scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's the thread or the bloodline, the, the promises of God, of how it started with blood and it ended with, it's going to end with blood. And, and Jesus was that final sacrifice. How many understand that? So they put the scarlet thread and what did it do? It was supposed to be a sign that she trusted that God, their God would not forsake her or her family. And that, they, that he would do, that spies would do exactly what they said, and that is they wouldn't bring any harm. So what's the confidence that you have? This is why I want to talk to you that the Father did not forsake Jesus. Because if there was a sign with the blood, this is what this scarlet thread represents. It represents a bloodline. In, in her day, in Joshua 2, it represented a literal you know, scarlet line, red line. Prophetically for us, it's our covenant right. And just as you will find out as you study in Je uh, Joshua 2 that God, all of the city of Jericho was destroyed, but God kept his word and they were not forsaken and they were protected because of the red scarlet thread. So no matter what you're going through in your family, no matter how crazy your kids might be acting, your spouse might be acting, what's going on in your family, maybe in your body, maybe your health, your finances, whatever, you have covenant promises today. And that's why I want you to hold this scarlet thread because it's a point of contact that God is not going to forsake you. Now let's talk about this. I want you to see this. In the same way, you can hold up your scarlet thread and your blood covenant rights. Because look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. I'm going to go kind of quickly. The Bible says that God will never, watch this, leave you nor forsake you. Now you might say, well, that's true because God forsook Jesus, so therefore we will never be forsaken. Well, I want to show you in Scripture because... Here's what happens. Religion has taught many things in the Word. And how many of you are familiar? They can put up Mark 7, verse 13, that the Bible even says that 
Our traditions have made the word of God of no effect. Can I tell you, how many of you always thought that the wise men, for example, was only three of them? I did for the longest time growing up. I mean, I have a manger that my grandpa made for me, and I went out and got some uh, manger people, I guess you call them, and there were three, three wise men, and their names are Gold, Frank, and Myrrh. And so those were the three wise men, and, and, and the wise men were with the shepherds, and, and it was a great time, right? But, you know, that's not really history, and it's not really your Bible. In fact, Rick Renner has a great book uh, out called um, something about Christmas. I don't forget the name. Do you remember what it is? The, true, the what? The rest of the story, and I'd recommend that you get it. Oh, man, it'll change your life. But how many know that the wise men came later on? And there wasn't three. There was a whole caravan. But see, religion teaches us this stuff that we start thinking is truth, and then <clears throat> we just buy it. Never research it out. We just take someone's word for it. Never go to the scriptures. Well, in the same way, we grew up, I grew up in the Lutheran church, hearing Eli, Eli, Laba, Sabachthani. I remember when the guy pronounced it, I thought, whoa, he's speaking a wild language. And then, he, then, the, then the Lutheran pastor would go on and say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? I'm like, whoa, he was forsaken. I believed it my whole life until God spoke it to me. So look at Matthew 27. Let's go there because you have to understand what is being said. In Matthew 27 and verse 46 is where you, you, you receive this. And by the way, this is the only verse, you get it in the Gospels, where you hear Jesus say this. It's only saying it one time, but there's so many other places where he said he would not be forsaken. And I'm going to show you. In Matthew 27, verse 46, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lava sabachthani, which is, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Now, this is what you have to understand. In the book of Mark, it's actually translated E-L-O-I, which is Aramaic. And for whatever reason, they translated it from Aramaic and they put it back over into the Greek and they, they, they made it to say, why have you forsaken me? But really, if they would have kept it like Mark did, E-L-O-I in the Aramaic, because think about it. Why did they, if they knew what Jesus was saying, did they say, hey, he's calling out to Elijah? So if he was speaking Hebrew or a language that they would understand, why didn't they look at him and say, oh, he, he's calling out to God? They didn't. They didn't know who he was talking to. And so here's what it literally means. Eli, Eli, in, in the Aramaic, for this reason, I have been kept. This reason, I've been spared. From the time that I announced who I was in Luke chapter 4, in the temple, look at me, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He opened the book and he began to preach out of it, closed it. All eyes were fastened upon him. And from that moment, the war was on. They wanted to kill him. And now, in fact, you can read in the book of John, John's gospel alone, there was eight different times they wanted to kill him and they couldn't do it because there was an anointing of preservation upon him. And he's saying it on the cross, God, Look at me. For this reason, I've been spared. I've been kept. They've tried so many times to kill me. But I'm laying my life down, and this is the reason. Now, I'm going to prove some more. All right. So you have to see. Let's go to proof number one. Proof number one that Jesus was not forsaken by his Father. He said it. He said he wouldn't be forsaken. Look at John chapter 8, verses 28 through 29. So he's having this major discord with the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, and they're getting into a heated debate on who Jesus is, whether he was, you know, uh, new Abraham. And he said, hey, man, before Abraham, I was. I am. He was saying the name of God, and they were getting mad and more angry. But here's what you have to understand, what even made him more angry. I'm going to teach this on resurrection service where Jesus appears to Mary and he puts my father. He says, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to my father, your father, my God, your God. Notice he put father before the deity. And, and what people don't realize is historians will tell you Jesus over 200 times referenced the father. And it wasn't like in the father, like the adult father. It was Abba. He used the word Abba over 200 times. And they, that's why they got so offended. How can a grown carpenter boy call his heavenly father daddy? That's not right. And then made him more angry. So now he's, he's getting into a discourse with them. And watch this. 
Then Jesus said unto them, watch this, underline it, when, all right, he's telling you, look for a sign. When you lift me up on that cross, underline, then a light's going to go off in your head. Then you will know that I am he, that I'm your Messiah, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Now look at the next verse. He's saying, now when you see me crucified, you're going to know who I am, and you're going to know also this. He, talking about his Abba, his Father, has sent me, is what? Is with me. So he's telling you, hey, it's going to look ugly, it's going to look brutal, but my daddy is not going to leave me. Watch this. He even tells you. He goes on. You're going to know when you see me lifted, he's with me, by the way. Even though I quote Psalm 22, you're going to know that he's with me. And if you really know Psalm 22, it says in Psalm 22, well, look there, that I was not forsaken. Notice my father, when you see me crucified, don't ever let it come into your head or your theology that my father has left me alone. He made it so clear, so clear. Now, notice it goes on. This is what you have to see. For I do always those things that please him. Now, why is that important that he would bring in Hey, when I'm lifted up on the cross, my dad's with me. He will not leave me. He said it. He has not left me. Not means he's not. Then he goes, by the way, I always do what pleases him. Now, why is that important? you got to fast forward after the crucifixion. Whenever there was a blood sacrifice from a blood offering from a lamb, God would always answer by fire. That's why 50 days later, tongues of fire sat on the head of the church because God was witnessing to the lamb, the final lamb, his blood sacrifice. So if the father looked away from the son, it would have to say, that's not a worthy, pleasing sacrifice. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So Calvinists think this, and I've done a lot of studying where Calvinists had got it wrong. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, this is a misquote. Watch this. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So people say, yeah, but Pastor Hank, the reason why God the Father forsook him is because Jesus was made sin. So it's like all of a sudden on the cross, he just turned into this whole world's sin. Is what people think. That's what the Calvinists believe. But really, that's not what you look it up in your lexicon. It's so simple if you get a lexicon, Greek lexicon. Look it up. It doesn't say he became sin. It says he became sin offering or sin sacrifice. Just like all the other lambs, he became, that lamb didn't become sin. That lamb was a sin offering, a sin sacrifice. And Jesus, as the Lamb of God, became not sin. He became sin offering, the sacrifice for all sin. Are are you hearing me? You have to understand this. All right. Let's go on. I'm going to show you another one. So let's go to 1 Peter 2.24 because I've had people say, yeah, but what about 1 Peter 2.24? All right, let's go there. Who in his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And I've had people say, see, he became sin because he bore in his own body, he turned into sin. No, look up in your lexicon. It's as simple as that. The word bore means, are you ready? To carry up and carry away. That's why if you know your history, the stone was rolled back up the hill. And it was with the force of nuclear power. When it says he rolled away the stone, the literal translation is, no, the stone rolled up. You have to look at the Greek words. It, it, it literally, it's like a cork bottle. You ever had, had saw champagne and they shake it up and pop the bottle? That's what God did with that rock. 
They rolled it down the hill and they popped it. He popped it back up. You talk about more supernatural to prove that he's alive. How do you get a big old rock that took an old army to get down and now it got blasted up? So in the same way, he bore our sins, not by becoming sin, but by becoming sin's offering, sin's sacrifice. And he bore it, meaning he carried it up and he carried it away. That's what that word means, it bore. doesn't mean he literally became, are you, are you listening? All right, now let's go on. Look at John, Jesus gives another clue. Look at John 16, verse 32. Jesus gives him another clue. He looks at all of his lunkheads. And... The book of Mark, you have to go to the book of Mark because when Mark explains, he always has Jesus telling his disciples this. Are you ready? Here's what he tells his disciples. He says, listen, they are going to kill me. I am going to suffer many hands, many things at their hands. But not once when he is describing at least three times in the book of Mark alone, when he was talking about how, how he will suffer, he will die. He ex explains it all. Not one time to his closest followers did he ever say, oh, and by the way, my father is going to leave me. No. John 16, he makes them keenly aware. Hey, I explained it in Mark's gospel, which means he explained it. Boys, they're going to kill me. I am going to suffer many things at their hands. But I want you to get something absolutely straight. And don't you ever forget it. Here's what he says. The hour is come, Jesus speaking. And it's now come that every one of you lunkheads are going to leave me. Every man to his own. And shall leave me alone. But I want you to know something. I am not alone. I won't be alone. My daddy is with me. I hate what religion does. He said, you're all going to leave, but you better understand one thing. When you see me bloodied and bruised and suffering many things at their hands, my dad is with me. Boy, that speaks more of a daddy that stayed with them than left. Yeah, but, but, but he turned his face away. No, look at Isaiah 53. It talks about the Messiah. And it says, we hid our faces from him. It was, is that verse 5? Did we, we, we hid our faces from him or is it verse 3? Which one is it? But he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, it would be verse 3. Verse 3. We, he was despised, rejected of men. Not rejected of God. Not once did it say the Messiah would be. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid our faces. Didn't say his father. And then people quote Isaiah 59, verse 2. Here, read this. So I've had this quoted to me. Yes, but Isaiah 59, verse 2, and I quote, okay, I'll just set it up. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you. He will not hear. See, see, God can't look at sin. No, God's saying, I refuse to look at sin. Why do you think, you ever thought about this, Exodus 33, 18 and 19? Moses cries out in Exodus 33, 18 and says, God, I want to see your glory. And God says, all right, I'm going to let all my goodness pass before you, but you're going to see my back parts. You know why? Read the chapter before, Exodus 33. What happened in Exodus 32? Moses and God were spending 40 days together, and they decided, Aaron's brother, to throw, according to Aaron's story, we threw some gold in the fire, and out came this bull. Well, that's a bunch of bull, Aaron. <laughs> and so, so, so God was mad. And I wrote a whole book called Don't Leave God Alone off of this revelation. And so, so God says, Moses, get away from me. I'm going to wipe them all out. Leave me alone. And Moses turned around and says, I'm not going to leave you alone. And one man changed the destiny of a nation. That's why I do Flashpoint. I get it because if one man can change the destiny of a nation, what can I do in my limited way? Why do I do what I Why do you do what you do? Now listen. So God was angry. And he says, all right, Moses, you can see my face. You can see my glory, I should say. But I'm going to remind you of what Israel did and how you are going to have to lead them out of this. I'm going to show you my back. I've turned my back on them. 
And you and I together are going to lead them, and they're going to have to follow me. So God will turn his back on things, but he didn't on Jesus. Now, keep reading. Go to Isaiah 59, verse 2. You've got to keep reading the other verses. Look, at it's not talking about Jesus. And that's what I say to people. Do you understand what verses 3 through 5 say? And they're like, wow, 3 through 5? I'm like, you can't take a verse out of context. You've got to look at the rest. For your hands are defiled with blood. That doesn't sound like Jesus. Your fingers with iniquity? That's not Jesus. Your lips have spoken lies? No, it says that there was no uh, uh, guile in him. Your tongue has muttered perverseness? No, it hasn't. This isn't talking about Jesus. God, when he gets grieved, has turned his face away. Not because he can't look at sin. If God couldn't look at sin, then why does he and, and Satan have a discussion about Job, the most righteous man in the earth? If God can't look at sin, then what does he have any business going down to the first sin with Adam and Eve? He looked right at him and said, okay, boys and girls, man, woman, Man parts, girl parts, man, woman, only two of you. Um, <laughs> he goes out and he, he, he kills a couple animals. So the first blood sacrifice was God. And he takes two coats of skin. I remember talking to Benny Hinn about it. And Benny goes, Brother Hank, those coats of skins were dripping in blood. I'm like, okay, I believe you. I believe you're Benny, and I believe you. <laughs> so, anyway, so let's, so let's go on. Let's, okay, so reason number one, Jesus said it. John 8, John 16. Now, second one. Who was watching over Jesus' bones? Because all through Scripture, it was prophesied that the Messiah, as a lamb, not one bone should be broken. So if the Father would look away his son is so vulnerable for the devil to take a crack at him. Somebody had to be watching over his boy so that the scripture could be fulfilled. What about John 19 verses uh, 33 and 36, I think. Yeah, 33. But when they came to Jesus, they saw he was dead, but they didn't break his legs. Verse 36, it tells you why. For these things were done, what? That his legs would not be broken because there's at least four other times in scripture. You can read it in Exodus and stuff where it says his legs are not to be broken. That it should be fulfilled. Not a bone of him should be broken. This is why. Listen, if you've got a broken fragment relationship with another Christian, come on, man. Forgive. Okay. God doesn't want separation. He doesn't like it. So, so my question is, this is a simple point. Who was watching over his bones? Look at Matthew 26, 53. Jesus said these words. He said, when they came to arrest him, he said, um, by the way, guys, do you not know that, that I can talk to my Alba? I can talk to my dad right now, and he would give me 12 legion of angels. So somebody was watching over him that not one bone of his body was broken. Somebody was watching over his boy. Reason number two. Number one, Jesus said it. John 8, when you see me lifted up, hey, 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 when you see me lifted up, my dad's with me. John 16, everybody's going to leave me. I'm going to suffer many things, but I am not alone. Right? Number three, why would Jesus come into agreement and only add fuel to the fire of those who were accusing him down below? Okay, look at Matthew 27. So G, look at what happened. You got you to put yourself into, into what Jesus must have been thinking. So, and they that passed by reviled him. They wagged their heads. And today they commented on social media. And said, watch this. Watch their accusations. You have destroyed the temple and you build it in three days. Ha, 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 save yourself. Okay, if you be the son of God, pop those nails out and come down here. Okay, they were, they were already questioning who he was. Okay, so point number one, they were questioning who he was. Yes or no? Yes. If you be the son of God. So Jesus is about to answer them in the verses to follow. Okay, what's the question? If you be the son of God, come down from the cross and prove it. So Jesus is about to tell them who he is, and he's going to show them who he is. 
by what he's getting ready to say, by the way, with a loud voice. Why did he lift his voice up? Here he is weak. Why did he make sure and why did the scriptures say, you're going to see in verse 46 in a minute, why did he say it with a loud voice? Because look at the accusation. If you be the son of God. So he's going to prove that he's the son of God by what he says in verse 46. And he's going to say it, put verse 46 up. He's going to tell them about the ninth hour. Jesus cries out right after this, Eli, Eli, lava sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was telling them exactly that he was the Messiah. Because right there, put up Psalm 22, verse 1. They would know, those that heard, what psalm he was talking about. Because they didn't have chapter and verses. If I say to you, Mary had a... Oh, you know the song. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle. Oh, you know the song. You must know that. In the same way, the question, go back to verse 40. If you be the son of God, prove it. So he does it with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, love us about the knee. Wait a minute. He's quoting Psalm 22. Twinkle, twinkle, little Psalm 22. I wonder who you are. They would know the rest of the psalm. Verse 16, put up Psalm 22, I think it's verse 16. They pierce my hands and my feet. Duh. They pierced his head. Dogs have compassed me. They pierced my hands. He was telling them. He was answering who he was. Now, let's keep reading. Go back to Matthew 27. Look at verse 41. Keep, keep going. Why would he... You got to understand, Jesus, why would he in John 8, when he's got all of his critics, the scribe, which is Time magazine, the lame fake news of Jerusalem, why would he empower, why would he empower the fake news? I don't think he would. I don't think that would work. Listen, they, they, they indicted then and they'll do it again. So why, why would he, you got to keep, look, look at verse 41. You know, this is, this is, I mean, you guys just, I put myself there and I try to, Figure this out. Likewise, also the chief priests now get into the mocking. With the news, the fake news, that's what scribes were, and the elders, and notice what they said. He saved others. He can't even save himself. Ha, 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 ha. If he be king of the Jews, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Keep reading. He trusted in God. Let who? So why would he, after he said in John 8, Hey, every one of you scribes, elders, when you see me lifted up, then you're going to know my Father's with me. He has not left me. Remember John 8? Did I not show it to you? John 16. All of you are going to leave me. No, not my dad. Why would he absolutely give them fuel to their fire? By saying, my God, my God, you've forsaken me. They're already saying, God's forsake you, forsook you. Look at you. Where's your dad? You said he wouldn't leave you. You're a mess. Come on, if somebody said that about your life, look at you. Where's your God? Would you get, no, you're not going to just let them continue to accuse your God. Why would he say, Eli, Eli, lava sabachthani, my God, you've forsaken me just like they're accusing you. No, he's telling the people who he is. And he's telling them by Psalm 22, verse 16. Here's why. Go to verse 24 of Psalm 22. It tells you. They would go, okay, lightning fast mind, Psalm 22. And, and, I, and I don't have time to talk to you about what the, you've got to get my book, My Heart Cries Abba, where I talk about what does it mean, the bulls. Who are the bulls? Who are the dogs? What, what did all that mean? I explain it, but watch this. Same song. Jesus was drawing their memory back because they would have known. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. They would have known. Watch. He has not despised nor have abhorred the affliction of the affliction. In other words, God's not looking away. 
neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried, he heard me. He's proving that his daddy's with him. And so he cries out and he says it. Now, I'm going to show you reason number. Are you ready? How many got this? Number one, he said he wasn't going to be forsaken. Who's watching over his bones? Number three, why would he add to the indictment against him, the accusing? Why would he give them fuel for the fire? Number four, this is a big one. I was laying on my bed and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, this, this point here. Are you ready? Jesus, when he prayed, always, always addressed God as his father. He's only 12 years of age. And how does he address God? In my father's house. In the garden. He didn't say, my God, if it be possible. He said, Abba, Daddy, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I will. Matt, I think it's Mark 14, 36, I believe. If possible, Daddy, let, let, let this pass for me. Okay, now, why would all of a sudden he break from, because he's wanting people to know that God turned his ear away. Why didn't he call him Father? Because it didn't stop him the other two times where he said, Father, forgive them. He didn't say, God, forgive them. They know not what they do. No, he wanted to make sure they understood that his father was connected. And that his father was, in fact, forgiving them. That he didn't turn away. He didn't look away. The father was there forgiving them. They didn't know what they did. So he brought the emphasis to daddy. Yeah, that's, that's why he was quoting Psalm 22. He wasn't praying. Do you, do you understand? Because it, why did he say, Father, right after he said this, Father, he didn't say, God, Father. So my question is, if the father looked away, abandoned him, and after he says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, the father goes, oh, my son's crying. Okay, and now I can look at him. That doesn't even make common sense. I don't think it makes theological sense. And I don't know if I would like that manner from my father. Father, you turned away, and then when I tell you to take my spirit, you decide to get on the scene? Doesn't make sense. It is why he didn't say, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But my God, my God. He was giving his critics revelation of who he is, what he was doing. And verse 24, when he looks at my affliction... He didn't hide his face. He heard me. Are you listening? All right. Last one. Last one. All right, number five. Well, God can't look at sin. Well, he never turned away from Adam and Eve. He looks at your sin. People quote this one in Habakkuk. Are you ready? So the prophet says, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. I've had people quote this verse to me. And I tell them, keep reading the verse. So Habakkuk says, God, your eyes are so pure. You, you don't like wrong. So then why are you? Because he says, why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you? God can look at evil. And he looked at the sin offering of his son. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He became the sin offering. 1 Peter 2, 24. He bore in his body. He carried it up and took it away as the lamb who would be the final and last sin offering sacrifice ever needed. This is why it says, I always do what pleases my father. Why? In fact, I please him so much, I'm giving my life as the lamb. And he's not going to turn away. He's going to approve of me. I please him. And by the way, he's going to send some fire in about 50 days. So why am I saying all of this? Look at 2 Corinthians 5.19. You've got to read this verse before 
This is a whole other subject of theology here. To wit that God was where? In Christ. When? Reconciling the world unto himself. When was God in Christ? And when was Christ reconciling the world unto himself? On the cross. I believe they never broke their union. Why am I saying that to you? Hold up your scarlet thread. Lastly, Brenda, I want you to go ahead and prepare to come on up here. If God did not, and there's many more in my book, you can get it. And I'm not trying to sell my book. I'm just trying to, if you think that I didn't do a good job giving you at least five reasons, there's a whole lot more. But if, if God didn't forsake his son, you should be so encouraged that he will not forsake you. And if God took that level of connecting and staying connected to the suffering Lamb of God, no matter what you go through, your family's going through, he will not forsake you. Father, I pray for every person right now in the sound of my voice. I pray that they would go to your word. They would study it out to see if the things that I've presented are so. But Father, this is the belief that I hold. I believe, Father, that you stayed with your son because you said, Jesus said it. He said it in John 8, John 16, and many other places, Lord, we see. And so because of that, I thank you that no matter what people are facing right now, that your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness is overshadowing them. We thank you that we can come boldly, according to Hebrews 4, 16, to the throne. We don't even have to ask for it. It's already been provided because of our covenant. We have grace. We live in your mercy. And we have help because the Holy Spirit is with us in our times of need. Father, I ask you today to extend your arm towards every person. And lavish them with your love, with your peace. Touch their bodies, their minds, strengthen them. And may they know, God, from this moment forward, how committed you were and are to your son, Jesus, Father, but also to us, joint heirs. It's a delight and it's an honor to know that we will never, ever, ever be forsaken. You will never leave us. And so, Father, I thank you also that no matter what people are facing, you've always provided, if they're in temptation, a way of escape. But according to the book of Romans, all things work together for their good because you're a good God, especially those that are called according to your purpose. Thank you. Thank you for just, I feel like God is just breathing a fresh breath of air into some people. Maybe you had an earthly father forsake you, leave you. Maybe your parents divorced at a young age. Maybe your father was abusive. And you don't have a good revelation, experience of what a father is. That's why I believe what I presented to you that you will know just how awesome of a heavenly daddy father that you have that he never in the most excruciating pain and suffering of his very own son he didn't leave him that's how faithful God is that's how loving God is that's how good God is and everything that happened to Yeshua is for your benefit so receive that. Just say that to the Father. Say, thank you, Father, that your presence is with me. Your spirit is upon me. It is well with me, with my family, my mind, my body, and all that you've entrusted to me. It is well in Yeshua's name. Amen. Pastor Brenda, would you come, please? Thank you. Amen. Did you get anything out of that? Praise God. Before you step away, I, I wanted to, Matthew had leaned over to me while 
pastor was preaching that. And just to emphasize that when Jesus quoted that phrase, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, he was drawing their attention to the 22nd Psalm. And Matthew had it in the margin of his Bible where they said, if you can save yourself, come down from the cross. Well, verse 8 of Psalm 22 says, they said, deliver yourself. That's good. They should have seen everything that was playing out in front of their eyes was the 22nd Psalm, twinkle, twinkle, little star. They would have known it that well. And they still didn't see it. They still didn't recognize it. And so it's just proof to the fact that Jesus was showing them who he was and that God was with him through all of that. And I just really believe that it's a sign even now for us and all that we're going through in the United States of America that there is a whole lot of people, come on somebody, that were like, no, our God is not going to leave us in this nation. He's not going to leave me personally. Come on, somebody. He's not going to leave my family. He's not going to leave my children. Come on, if you have prodigal children in this room tonight, come on, God's not going to leave them. God's not going to leave your husband. He's not going to leave your wife. Come on, whoever, whatever the story is, God said, I will never. Come on, somebody say never. I will never leave you or forsake you come on that is the prophetic word of the hour right now you know pastor i hear so many people just saying well god's given up on the united states of america god we're doomed to judgment all of these transgenders and everything they're doing i'm like well but since when is god basing it all on them what about all of us we're standing in faith that God is not going to forsake this nation. We're standing in faith that God's not given up. Come on. God has not turned his back. We're standing. And God is looking at us and go, I didn't forsake Jesus. I'm not going to forsake you. Come on. I think we ought to just take a moment and thank him right now. Come on. Come on. On this good Friday, I want you to take a moment in your own words. And just begin to thank the Lord. Come on, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on, in your own words, pray it out. Prophesy it. Declare it right now. Come on, declare. Thank the Father that he is with you. Come on, maybe you're facing something tonight. Maybe you're online and you're going through a trial, a battle, a wilderness. I don't know what it is. Maybe you feel like you are standing alone. I'm going to tell you right now, God is with you. And so, Father, for that, we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that you're with us. Thank you that you're with us in this nation. You're with us in the earth. I just feel prophetically to say this. I feel like there's some people, you have an assignment from God. And you feel like, God, it just seems difficult to fulfill it. Well, I really believe that God is telling you through this message that he's with you. And you will, come on, fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. Pastoral staff to come. Ushers, you can begin to serve the people. We're going to pray over these requests. I want to get some of the prayer leaders up around the bottom of this altar. This is a holy moment right now. This is a holy moment on Good Friday as we're holding out. Here's the thing. Don't just pray for yourself. Put your thread back up. Don't just pray for yourself tonight. Hold up the scarlet thread for somebody else. There's people in these represented that are going through a marriage failure. There's people that have a, a terminal diagnosis from a doctor. There's people in here that somebody have they've given up on people on drugs people in jail i mean all kinds of stories are represented up here so let's can we hold up the thread for somebody else tonight come on i want you to begin to pray out loud in the holy ghost Sunday. <laughs> 
Come on, pray in the spirit. We have God's guarantee. Come on, use your river in faith. Come on, we break the power of the devil from off of God's people right now in the authority of Jesus' name. We bind every mind-binding spirit, every demon of infirmity. We break your power right now. We bind every lying spirit. We bind every perverse spirit. We take authority over every demon of fear, every spirit of terror. We bind you, every demon of hell. Get off of God's people right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Call them a right now. We say those prodigals, they're pricked in their hearts. Father, they're pricked in their hearts. Father, that the spirit of the Lord descends wherever the prodigal is. Father, into a drug-infested house. It descends now. The spirit of the Lord descends. And we say freedom. 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 The one that came to set the captives free. Father, say the loosening of Father the bounds that have bound your people we say yes, they're loose Lord. now in Jesus name in Jesus name those that are believing for the restoration of marriages yes, Lord, Lord restoration in their family Father we speak that the spirit of restoration the spirit of peace the bond of unity would invade their homes now oh Father we pray yes Lord for the healing we pray for your deliverance yes Lord. God we pray for the blood to be poured out over these people Lord God we pray we pray let it be done what they've asked let it be done yes let it be done now in the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. It is done. It is done. You've not forsaken any one of these. Yes, Lord Jesus. You pour your spirit out on every one of these. So now, God, we believe yes, Lord Jesus. that, Lord, what they're asking for is finished now. Yes, Lord. What they're asking for is coming to pass now, now, in this season, now, yes. now. The brokenhearted bound up now. 
And we speak to heart disease. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Be healed. We say that it flees in the name. Yes. For those that are believing for health, divine health and wholeness, we say now it comes to you in That's Jesus' right. name. Matthew, I sense that there's some people that need jobs and finances. Let's pray over that, Matt. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we speak and declare those that are looking for increase, those are, that are looking for new opportunities. We say a divine turnaround comes over your life now in the name of Jesus. For as the Lord was in the garden of Gethsemane, all the way to the cross, all the way to the tomb, the story changed. Hell had thought they won, but the Lord, what people don't talk about is he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and stopped on all demonic spirits. And so now we declare any spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, jobless Come spirits on. that want to attack the people we say get off of the people now in the name Shaka of Jesus name of the, the we say name. a bloodline goes over the people now yes, we say those that are looking for new jobs restoration double blessing yes. financial increase double 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 and mountains move in the name of Jesus it comes down now 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 in Jesus name Pastor Doji, I want you to take a couple moments for anyone that is watching, those that are in this room, and anyone who your prayer requests. I want him to war against what Jesus said, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in the court of heaven. And whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed out of the court of heaven. We have authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil, including witchcraft. So I want you to pray. Let's war over these requests and those that are watching as well. Pastor Doji. Paragadia Casofra, he parin the river Sebra Ataka, ye Mary Shabranda of Rebres, Pari Tama, ye Pararas, Le Melegle Soprada Fra, Marie de Glade Levre, Viesha, 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 Viesha. In the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name, I command every spirit of infirmity, disease, come out, come out, 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 in the name. Jesus, I command spirit of death. I cut your hands off. We cut your hands off. Come out, come out. Spirit of depression, come out. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare no witchcraft, no warlock, no enchantment, no voodoo. No sorcery can touch you. In the name of Jesus, we release angels of fire. We release the angels of fire. Hey, you are loose. You are loose. You are delivered. You are set free. Ah. You know what I, I feel in my spirit so as a prophetic act? Uh, do we have extra scarlet threads? I want one of the staff find some of the extra ones because we had some in the foyer. Or those of you that are up here, here we're going to lay these on these prayer requests. For those that may not have one out there, we're going to do this on their behalf too, Brenda. Yes. Maybe you're you're watching tonight and you're going, you know what? Or you're here tonight and say, I don't have one. Listen, we stand. We stand for you. And this is the point of contact for you. How many will connect your faith to this? That this is, you may not have a scarlet thread, but here's the deal. All of these represent, Come on. all of these represent your prayer request. And I feel like there's something, I feel like there's a couple things that we still need to do before we, we, we call in tonight. And, and I, I heard the Holy Spirit. He was speaking to me as I was standing here. He said, Hank, he said, there's some things that I want 
the church to get over into other tongues because I'm going to release breakthroughs and divine mysteries, but it will be in the language of the Spirit. Amen? Yeah, so we're going to do that. And the second thing we're going to do is how many, of you, how many believers are in here? Praise God. And Pastor Doug and Eileen, you're going to help me with this because after we get done with this, we're going to pray. You as believers are going to lay hands on the sick, each other. Some of the greatest miracles is not from the platform. Right. <laughs> it's from it's the true. people being used of God right there. But what I do want to do, and Pastor Doug, maybe you can help me with this, is Pastor Doug and Eileen, you know, they do a lot of our hospitals with Pastor Keith. Come up here. These guys have seen incredible miracles when it has come to life-threatening, serious um, conditions. And if maybe you're here tonight and you have a serious condition, you have something that maybe the doctor diagnosed that you need a breakthrough, we're going to have them go down here after we pray in tongues. They're going to go down here in front with the game changers, with Pastor Keith as well. Where's the game changers? You guys are going to go down there, Pastor Doji. And, and you can come out, ushers, they don't have to come up. They can just come over here and hands will be laid on them over here in this section. How many got that? Anybody here that, that you would say, that's me, that's you, okay? All right? Then you can, in just a moment, we're going to let you go over there and pray. And then we're going to speak to that camera right there too. All right, are you ready? Go ahead and obey God what okay. you have, Brenda. So, Let's go. Matt, just and then we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost the, after I want this. them to get a picture of this for everybody around the world. This is for people who And I want everyone to see. Form. This is what we're standing in faith. The scarlet thread represents that we have yeah. a guarantee through the blood of Jesus. And as we cover these, those of you around the world, those of you in this room, I want you to get an image, a picture of everything the devil has tried is covered. It is covered. I'm telling you, it's covered. It is covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It is covered by the blood. Come on, somebody. It is Amen. covered. It is covered. Amen. It is covered. Amen. We have a guarantee because of the blood. Amen. So, Father, we thank you that we hold the scarlet thread over every one of these Amen. requests. It's this, these are laid upon these requests as a prophetic act of faith. We thank you that every single situation That's right. has been covered by the blood of Jesus. We seal that. And we say that everyone has a guarantee of a peaceable outcome. Yes. And we thank you. Like Rahab, they have Good a Lord. peaceable outcome. Amen. And whatever it is that is represented on these That's papers right. and those that maybe didn't have one we say they have a peaceable outcome those that didn't submit a request here or just maybe are tuning in we say over them a peaceable outcome everyone in this room everyone under the sound of my voice we hold the scarlet thread as a sign of jesus blood and we have a guarantee. And Father, for that, we say thank Amen. you thank in you. Jesus' name. All right, name. I want you to do this. Romans chapter 8 says this. It says, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. How many of you are willing to lift up? How many of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand. Okay. Praise God. Let me ask you this. Anybody here that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, but you'd like to be, you'd like to speak in tongues. Anybody here? There's a man, I can sense it in my spirit. There's a man over in this section over here. God's talking right to you. You've been putting it off for months and years, and uh, you know you need to. And you're over in this section. Where are you? Raise your hand. Come on, now's the time. We're going to pray for you in just a moment, but you're a man over in this section. You need to be filled with the Spirit of God. I can sense it. Yep. I can tell you're right back in that section right over there. Who are you? Come on. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> It'll change your life. All right. Now, here's what I want you to know. Jude verse 20 says this. You build yourself up in your most holy faith by what? All right. So there comes a point where we're not praying for ourselves. We're not praying in tongues to build ourselves up. Right? These are precious people this is what this represents all of these prayer requests so we have to sh kick into a certain realm of the holy spirit's flow that takes it out of me being built up in the spirit to now making intercession and what that requires is you to cooperate with the holy spirit but allow your body and your emotion to be part because jesus said this he said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak he didn't say ignore the flesh he was trying to draw attention to don't let your flesh 
govern you, right? And people do that when they pray in tongues, they get lazy. They pray, well, that's lazy, right? You're a triune being. Let it go. So we're going to pray strong for all these people and you that are watching. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to lift up your voice. Let's get over into a realm of intercession for all of these people. Are you ready? Itato. Father, we pray in the Holy Ghost for every single person in the sound of my voice. We don't know how to pray as we are, but the Spirit we pray in the spirit for every prayer request It has come to the people and for the people now. In the name of Arabase, in the name of Arabase, in the name of the Arabase, let it be now in the name of Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Now, if you have, and you want prayer, and you want prayer, you're sick in your body, there's a symptom, let's just say, and you want to be prayed for, the Bible says the believers shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So if that's you, you have something that you want people to pray for you about regarding some kind of symptom in your body. I want you to raise your hand. Keep your hand up. All right. Now, believers, I want you to get around them. Now, if you have something, Pastor Doug and Eileen, Pastor Keith, Game Changers, you go down there. If you have some serious condition, some kind of diagnosis that you need and you desire hands laid on you, go ahead and make your way out. Come over here. Meet with them. All right. Come on, believers. Go out. Go out, go out, begin. Begin to find those. I don't want anyone with their hand raised up not having someone. We got somebody right here. There's nobody to pray for them. Come on, come on. God's the healer. God's the healer. God is the healer. All you are is a conduit of His power. Come on, anybody else? You have your hand raised up and you have, you have nobody around you. Anybody? Bill, you have somebody right next to you? Okay, all right. If you got somebody next to you, put your hand down. If you don't have anybody to pray for you, keep your hand up. Otherwise, put your hand down. 
All right, we need somebody right here. All right, all right, begin to pray. Come on, begin to declare, be healed. I speak to you, those of you that are watching. I send the word that God's people shall be healed. In the name of Yeshua, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. He took the chastisement and the punishment of your peace. And by Yeshua's stripes, you are healed. Receive it. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke disease. I rebuke pain in your body. I command all infirmity, all spirits of infirmity, any demonic assignments, generational curses. We break it. We break your power. We command sickness. We command disease, pain, infirmity. Come out of your body now in the name of Yeshua. And we release the virtue, the same virtue that came out of Jesus' body in Mark 5 with the woman with the issue of blood. We release that anointing, that power, that virtue. Be thou made whole from this moment. No more pain, no more disease, no more sickness, no more infirmity. Ears be open, eyes be open. We curse cancer. Come out and stay out. All pain, loose them. Those that are lame begin to walk in the name of Yeshua. Those who have a doctor's report, diagnosis, we prophesy that you are under Abacare, the highest health insurance policy called Zoe Life. Jesus said he's come to give you life, the God kind of life, health, healing, wholeness, soundness of mind. It's yours. We release the rights of what's already been provided in the atoning blood of Yeshua. Be healed, be healed, be healed. Come on, if you're getting prayed for, you, you just say, Lord, I receive. I receive my healing. I receive it in my body. I receive it in my mind. I receive my healing. I am healed. Come on, shout it, I am healed. I am healed. In the name of Yeshua, be thou made whole. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Of the Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just let God minister to the people, Lord. This is why Jesus was wounded over 2,000 years ago. For the rights and privileges of our blood of the Lamb, it is done. It is done by the blood of the Lamb. It is finished by the blood of the Lamb. It is done by the blood of the Lamb. It is finished by the blood of the Lamb. It is done. Come on, just worship him. Worship him. By the blood of the Lamb. We worship It is finished by the blood of the Lamb. It is done. Thank you, Lord. By the blood of the Lamb. It is finished by the blood of the Lamb. It is done. Amen. Come on, say with me. By the blood of the Lamb, it is finished. It's well with me. Is it well with you? Amen. I want to just do this as we close. Pastor Brenda, would you come? I was talking to a young man today. Wow, he wasn't young. He was a little bit younger than me. And I asked him a question. And I said, do you know what happened over 2,000 years ago? He said, no. I said, Jesus died for you. 
He was beaten, bloody, whipped for all humanity. I said, do you know God? He says, well, sometimes I go out and I talk to the stars. I said, you know what's beautiful about God? You don't have to have God out there. You that are watching, you don't have to have God out there, some mystical. You can have God in here. That's the beauty of what Jesus did. So maybe you're here tonight and you've never asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart or maybe you're watching. This is the most important part of what we do. Hell is a real place. It's forever and ever and ever. It's so bad that Jesus described it in Luke 16 where he talked about the rich man. It wasn't that he was rich that he went down. It's because his lifestyle and the things that he chose to do he never made his pathway of his life to God. And there was one point, Jesus said that the man lifted his eyes in hell and he prayed for just a little bit of water to cool his tongue. Jesus said the worm or the maggot doesn't die there. They come out of your body. Since the man lifted his eyes in torments, it's forever and ever and ever. You say, well, how can a loving God send me there? God didn't send us there. It's because we reject the blood that saves you, forgives you, reconciles you. In other words, brings you back to God. If you're in this room tonight, we're not going to fluff it. You that are watching, we're just going to simply say, you've never asked Jesus in your heart to forgive your sins, to be the Lord of your life, or maybe you're away from God. I want you to be bold. We need bold people in the body of Christ, especially in America. If that's you, lift up your hand very high and say, Preacher, that's me. All right, there's a hand over there. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, I want you to come out. Pastor Doug, you're up here. I want you to come, and I want you to find your way to Pastor Doug. Pastor Doug, he's right over here. Go ahead, step on out. I see another one. There's another hand. There's at least two of you. Go ahead and step out. Pastor Doug's going to pray for you privately over there. But here's what I'm going to do for those of you that are watching. I want us all to pray this prayer. I want you to bow your head. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus, I call upon you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. And I will serve you from this moment forward all the days of my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the angels are rejoicing. So I want, he's going to pray, minister. Them. Now, I'm going to do this last thing. I know I keep saying last. You're like, come on, man. You keep doing it 10 times. But I made a reference to somebody over here that needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But is there anybody else, you're here tonight, and you say, you know what? I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in tongues. I'm going to dismiss the people so they can go about their, their day and get ready for Resurrection Sunday. You have an announcement I think you're probably going to make or anything before we go? Okay. Without keeping you, but is there anybody here? You say, you know what, Pastor Frank? I heard you praying in tongues, and I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Anybody here? It's your time. It's your day. Come on. I'm going to have the altar team come up, and they're going to pray for you. We're going to dismiss, and they're just going to take five minutes and pray with you. Is there anybody here? Come on. I'm telling you, I feel there's a woman in this section over here. You've been putting it off. You need to, you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. It's time. Speak in other tongues. A woman over here, a man over here. Who's, who's over here? Where's the man? Is there a man? Somebody's clapping. Did he decide to come forward? Is he over there now? Okay, they're shaking their heads saying the, the guys are here. Where's the woman that was over in this section? You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I just sense it. All right. Pastor Brenda, would you close us? How many enjoyed tonight? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, I do want to say this. Watch Sunday at 9 and 11.30 because I'm going to talk about why did Jesus say, Mary, my Father, your Father, my God, your God. So I want to talk about the characteristics of the Father.
It's going to be Amen. powerful. All right. So 9 o'clock, 1130, right here at Lord of Hosts Church. Make sure you're here. And I would tell you, get early enough so that, number one, you find a parking. And by the way, how many of you saw the parking lot getting redone across the way? Amen. And then, and there's more improvements to come. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But make sure you get here on time. Find a parking, 9 o'clock and 1130. We will see you Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. We'll see you then. Oh, Matthew. Oh, right. Matthew said, come and join the Game Changers for Resurrection Weekend Breakfast. Matt, what time is it at? 9 o'clock? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And so be here. Come at the church. And the Game Changers would love to see you. Hug somebody as you go. God bless everybody online. Go.